Hello ladies and gentlemen, Drake Hawkins with you for some Stone Hearth. We are going to be playing a totally new series to the channel. A uh, fantastic game that I've really enjoyed over the last, well, about a year ago. Um, enjoyed it a bit and it was kind of frustrating with all the little oddities and weirdness of the early alphas. That was Alpha 10.5. This is now Alpha 21 that just released a couple days ago. Absolutely love what they've done with this. So I'm going to get right into this. There's going to be other videos coming out that will detail kind of the how-tos and tutorials as we go along. But uh, get let me know what you think, what sort of uh, feedback you have. Um, if you want to get one of yourself, one of, get yourself named or choose a name for one of the um, one of our hearthlings, just let me know in the comments below and uh, let me know what you think of the game and we'll get right into it. So this is basically a little bit of a storytelling slash base building community colony sim sort of a deal. So here we are. This is the story of a brave band of settlers from, we're going to choose the Ascendancy, earnest and hardworking, loyal and well-rounded citizens of the Ascendancy chop, build and farm confident of the that the known world is theirs to inhabit. A prosperous and industrious kingdom, the Ascendancy, seeking new lands and adventure, they set off to forest, rivers, and mountains in the temperate zone, default home of the Ascendancy. We're going to go with that one. Set off to Dark Moor, Dark Moor Forest. We're going to go with normal difficulty, a location that is sure to be an inspiring place to start anew. Click on any of these, you can change them. You can switch the group or the biome or the uh, difficulty. So this is what's changed big time here is the roster. Uh, previous to this particular version, you basically just hit the reroll button and it would reroll all seven of them. Um, the images, everything was just, was just solid built in. You get no choices, just hope you roll something nice and you just kind of pick mind, body, spirit. Hope you got a good collection. So. Uh, that's no longer the case. You can now independently roll individuals. There is also, um, on the right here, you can choose uh, gender options. And as well as hair color, skin color, hairstyle, and for the males, facial hair. Uh, then there's two other factors going on here. So let's see, do we have one? Uh, let's reroll until we get, a, get one that I can give you an example of. Blah, blah, blah. Where are you? Okay, here we go. So we've got a bunch of traits. Now, usually, as you notice, it took a couple of rolls to even get one of these passions. But, um, and we'll, I'll do some of the rolling and, and choosing and naming and all that offline and then come back and explain as to why I'm doing this. But these are their traits. So in, as of Alpha 21, they now have, I guess you'd call them personality traits. Uh, Alex, Alex uh, Stroden here is a carnivore. Alex Strun loves, just loves animals, especially with hot sauce. Also a pessimist, is a half empty glass kind of person. And that, so those different, um, what are they called, traits, and there are 16 of them. Uh, callous, there's another one, courageous, um, pack mule, excitable, green thumb, pessimist, the cultist, which is absolutely hilarious. If you've been watching your maps as you play this, or if you've seen it in any other videos or watch ours, you will see these giant stone bunnies that are just ancient artifacts. So this hearthling keeps mumbling about some sort of secret bunny god. Sleeping eternally, what's that about? Da da da! So that's the only, the only like hint at anything religious in this game. It's quite funny. Um, that and the fact that there are clerics, but that's more of a uh, RPG sort of thing. So you got mind and body and spirit. Body basically is focused on their health. Uh, mind is primarily about their ability to craft and do such things. Spirit has a couple things that's really good at. Uh, clerics, for instance, the passion for cleric. Um, spirit's good for that. Spirit's also good for warriors to have at least some so that they're less likely to run. It, base, it affects their courage and so on. As well as uh, if you have a trapper or animal, um, or what are they called? Shepherds. Uh, spirit is related to that as well. So um, I'm going to take a bit of time. Oh, sorry. One more thing I was going to show you. This, these are the uh, si some of the 16 traits that they can have. And they can also have passions. So for each of the also 16 um, skills, not skills, jobs that they can do, they can have a passion for that. So basically you want to 
to keep them happy and to have them thrive in their particular choice of life, you want to put them into what they're passionate about. Most of the time, they won't have a passion unless you really, you know, do a lot of random re-rolling to find the best of the best, so to speak. So I am going to do a bit of that. There was one. There's another one. Passion for footmen. Um... I'm going to do a bit of that. I'm going to name some of our duplicates, or not duplicates, wrong game. That's oxygen not included. Um, check that series out on the channel. Um, they are hearthlings, hearthlings, right. So I'm going to do a bit of rolling off screen, and I will be back to uh, continue with you in just a moment. All right, so we've got our crew set up here. Uh, we're going to run through them really quickly and explain a few things about them and uh, get you familiar with the family. Uh, we have two that are not, that are, you know, friends of the family. We've got Arthur the Nimble Thread up here. He is going to be, as his name might suggest, the weaver of the crew. He's also a night owl, so uh, the day only really begins once the sun has set. I'm not sure how that's going to play in. I haven't seen those guys in play yet, but I'm guessing he's going to sleep at different times and so on. Uh, the passionate weaver, uh, so he'll be our tailor. Um, mind is your crafting focus, so that'll be help. That'll be helpful for him. And we go down to the bottom here to Exeter Silas. Uh, he is going to be our cleric, uh, spirit but focused, but he's also going to be near battle, so having a little bit of body helps as well there. Uh, my namesake here is going to be Drake Hawkins, of course. And uh, I found a nice little set of traits. I want a wanted a farmer, so we found Green Thumb. Uh, seems to have a way with plants and uh, somewhat indescribable. Um, although I'm not super green thumb, I do love farming and gardening. I guess gardening more than farming, so that seems to suit. Mind of six, body of five. Body's not that important, I'm guessing, for a farmer, but that's all right. And he's a bunny lover, uh, true believer in the bunny, the bunny god. Um, so that'll be fun. See how that plays out. Speaking of which, down here at the bottom of the list is Ari Hawkins, also a believer in the uh, bunny god. And uh, it's going to be our shepherd with a high spirit rating. I didn't quite find a six, but a five with a passion for shepherds. Seems like a great combination. Move up here, we got Janaea Hawkins is our um, blacksmith, or going to eventually be our blacksmith. For now, probably just worker. Um, Heart of the Crafter. This is uh, an interesting one. I think this is going to affect their mood substantially if they don't craft so that might be a downer for her at the beginning if she's just doing worker stuff but mind of five which is going to help with the blacksmithing um next here is elijah hawkins a six body and six spirit passionate knight so it'll be a while before he gets to be a knight he's got to actually go through the footman uh stuff first but six body and six spirit that's going to be a great combination for our our primary defender and general of our armies uh, top here is, last but not least, in fact, probably the most active and most fer fervently the most vital character of any uh, Ascendancy crew when you start out is going to be your Carpenter. And we have a Carpenter who happens to have an animal companion. Uh, uh, let's see. Ever since Tyla Hawkins saved their rabbit from mortal danger, they've been inseparable. Now, I thought once I read that that was a fox... Maybe it's rabbit or fox or different things. So we'll see. Maybe she starts with and has a little bunny rabbit following her around all the time. So there's some more bunny love for you. Um, I was tempted to uh, name this like some sort of Latin version of uh, of rabbits or something strange like that in my oddities. So Tyla is a carpenter and mind of six is fantastic. So on with that, we've set up all the, all the characters. Then we hit uh, start the roster. Uh, or resources rather select resources there are three options so far they say that more is to come for sure right now we've got three options I'm gonna pick the merchant caravan I'll tell you right up front and I think anybody should unless they want some sort of oddball challenge it seems to me to be the best but let's run through them all food for days farmer a bunch of food and a tiny bit of gold you can get one of those because you start with the carpenters saw so they can quickly cut down one tree make a bench make a um, make you know a level or two and then they can make this so it's not long maybe five ten minutes of play and you'll be ha having that same with the weavers that's maybe level two carpenter can make that and it's a bit of food and a bunch of gold for the money solves all problems i'm guessing weavers are good at you know probably good at producing a lot of stuff you can sell i found that in previous plays but 
Merchant Caravan has one thing that's just, to me, irresistible. It is that trapper's knife. Until you get a blacksmith to, I think, level 3, you can't make one of those. And you have to have, you know, a decent source of metals and smelt up the metals and all the rest of that stuff. So, starts with a footman's uh, blade, a trapper's knife, and an herbalist's staff. 20 gold, 10 berries. We should be able to get berry, more berries for a while. So, we are going to pick the Merchant Caravan. Uh, map settlement is an oddball deal here. Um, we actually have a the option to get um, to use specific maps that we have previously generated, and I'm actually going to go ahead and grab that map code that I have somewhere. Give me a second. All right, I found it. So we this is what the uh, map generator does. It gives you a, a map seed down here, a random generation. As you move your mouse around, the yellow thing is going to be where you center your um, your start point. You can place the flag in various, you'll see that in different spots, but it gives you an idea. So in, the, in this, it's going to be showing on the right lots of trees and plants, wildlife in, of different uh, densities in different areas. Actually, this is so thick in the wildlife. And then as you go into the mountains, of course, the trees tend to disappear, the wildlife tends to disappear, and you get more minerals. So uh, I've got one that I'm really looking forward to playing a little bit into. I've kind of dabbled with it and just kind of explored what there is to see, this is a 195-998-3689. Go ahead and try it if you want to uh, play along. You're welcome to it. Uh, there we go. So we got this little oddball sort of a shaped lake down here with an island on it. I think we're going to start on this island. And uh, there is lots of minerals over in here. Tons and tons of them, actually. Some minerals even down in here. No minerals showing on the island, it seems. And then we get up into the woods here, or up into the rocks here and we've got more islands so or more minerals so if we start on the island we're gonna actually either qu have to quarry straight down from the island possibly dig underneath and come to maybe over here for some minerals or up here for some minerals but it'll be interesting so we're gonna select a spot and click click settle here and then it's gonna generate the world for us uh, all right so this is our map it's gonna pop up here there we go it's a little bit of uh tutorial stuff as of this latest version there's a tutorial here just just basic WASD zoom in and out with these guys you know right mouse to, to look around and and so on right now what we got going is this bouncing town banner um, it'll let you place click there it'll let you place the banner anywhere you want and that sets your home spawn point so let's throw it right down in here and get things started okay we have our village called Terra Lupus. Wonderful. Terra Lupus Town, initial supply. So we're just going to buzz through these. It's going to ask us a few tutorial things. I'm just going to kind of quickly run through them. Uh, get wooden logs, sure. So what you do is you come down here, you click on the harvest, choose the harvesting tool, and you can harvest things like that. And it puts a little axe up there that gives the order to harvest. Little plants like this, that's going to give us some, uh, what is that, uh, silkweed. That's for growing, uh, sorry, for tailoring. Uh, we can go over here and harvest these for berries. Look around for those near your first initial camp. That's going to be important for you. Next thing it's going to ask us is to say, hey, build yourselves a stockpile, please. And so we'll do that here, let's say, right here. Let's do a 20 by 20 there. Check mark, good, that's what we wanted. Okay, we got the hearth, uh, the, pardon me, the stockpile set. So we'll put a couple of those in, and then we're gonna go in here, and the next thing it's gonna ask us is to select somebody who's going to be our uh, carpenter. So who did we have as carpenter? There you are, Tyla, get you a job. So uh, change jobs on Tyla, and you can choose, uh, in this case we can choose footman, herbalist, Carpenter and Trapper. Trapper, all these three we actually got because we of the start we chose. We got the tools for it. You'll always start when you're Ascendancy with a Carpenter Saw. The slight difference is that the with the uh, the other race choice is that you could have this uh, Potter's Tool, which is actually these two are switched. So on the Desert Peoples, the Pottery comes first, then uh, Masonry, and so on. So we'll set her as our fantastic new carpenter. And where is she? There she goes. Da, 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 da. Ah, what a moment. We have a carpenter. So now that we have our carpenter selected, it's going to give us another command. There we go. 
set up a workbench. So to make a workbench, you can either select your character if you find them easily enough. Uh, let's get off there. Come on, off there. There we go. We can select her and either change jobs or get the workshop option. The other place to get this workshop is to go down here and click on crafters and all of your active crafters will have a highlighted bar. We click on that and tell her to build a carpenter's bench. Select the thing you want to build over here, the gray out ones you just don't have skill or materials or something like that for. Two options, you can either maintain in your inventory, it'll tell her to check to make sure there's enough of, there's X number of these in the inventory at all time. Once one's used up, it'll give it an order to make another one. It'll remain on the order list. So we're just going to craft one of these workbenches for now, over there, adds it to the right. If you wanted to delete it, you could drag it down and throw it in there, but we don't. And then as soon as she's done that, we're gonna tell her to go ahead and order up to craft us uh, seven beds. There we go. There we go. Place the carpenter's workbench. So we, we crafted a carpenter's workbench and now we need to place it. So we can either find that little thing. Where is it? There it is. Uh, the actual tools are sparkling. Do you notice that? Little bubblies. Ooh, look, a big pile of sparkly gold. That's not placeable, but all right, so we can select items that you want to place, like the workbench, and use that button. Or you can come over here to the, hey, get off that screen, to the building and design option. And what we're looking at right now is place items. All your items that are placeable will be listed here. You just grab it and slap her down there somewhere. Uh, let's put it right here. Boom. Okay, now anybody will queue up the command. Who's going to get that? Looks like Janae is going to go grab us uh, with her cute little pink pigtails. There we go. We now have a carpenter's bench placed. It's a fancy log with like bolts on the bottom. That's fantastic. Uh, we've got resources, a place to store goods, and a way to craft items. We're well on our way to getting this settlement off the ground. One bed. Excellent. So day and night cycle, top right hand side here. Uh, it's actually, if you mouse over, it shows the time. It's now about four o'clock in the evening. So we should probably let, uh, let us, now that she's got these bits, why is she just throwing it there? Why you throw it there, girl? That's not a place. Uh, I don't know why she dropped it there. Oh, you know what? I had a setting. So if you hit escape. Oh, hold on a second. There are some settings here, and I should show you what they are. I did use gameplay settings here to uh, storage filter defaults to none. So anytime you make a storage, you can either have that on or off. If you check the box, there'll be nothing allowed in that storage place so they won't start filling it until you actually get around to it you can click auto loot which means if you kill something and it drops something it'll pick it up it won't automatically pick up like except other things but show hearthling path really makes the map messy auto queue crafting for buildings i suggest highly suggest leaving this one on so if i tell her to build uh if we make a building and we say okay we're gonna make you know some floors and some walls and then we're gonna put some beds in and maybe some chairs and some lamps if we don't, as soon as we build that and click the build button, the chairs, the lamps, the things that our crafter makes will actually go ahead and uh, add them automatically to her queue. So uh, let's grab this, uh, where is it? Glow down to de zone designation. And we're going to place this one for resources and let them go with tools as well and wealth. There we go. And then over on this side, we're going to make this one our food, for instance, and our construction material, or constructed items. Actually, let's, yeah, that's fine. Just like that. So that uh, will get them all busy stockpiling things. Now, something uh, that I do like to do, and I'm going to do that right away on this one, it takes a bit of time at the beginning, but I find it really, uh, I don't know, I like it. I just like it, okay? We're going to pick up all these plants. You can uproot and replace these, something I didn't recognize initially when I started playing, but it's a fantastic little feature. Um, let's me basically, uh, you know, set up my little pretty garden place. For now, we're just going to shove them all in a nice row up top. Uh, it won't take the... Yeah, it won't change whether or not they're harvestable right now, which is kind of odd. I think as soon as you move them, realistically, it should, like, reset their timing to empty, but it doesn't. This is, uh, you know, not quite real world, but there is a real bunny. There is a real bunny. I should show you the bunny, the the almighty bunny statues. They're fantastic. There's these giant bunny st stone bunnies. Where are they? Come here, bunny. Look at it. Hello, stone bunny. <laughs> this is great. An ancient monument. 
Mossy, but the stone is still good. We are going to totally revere the stone bunnies and leave them alone. And there is another one right up here. So we got a bunny on our, to our south and a bunny to the north. We're a safe people, I tell you. Some seriously happy hearthlings. I don't know if it actually plays anything in the game, but it's absolutely amazing that they did that. So let's put all the rest of these in line here. <laughs> we have a few more. Get going, hearthlings. Go, go, go. Where are you? Oh, slide over here. And I think if we set them all up in the nest row over here, we will be uh, very happy with that. Won't we? Now, I can actually tell them to harvest these independently by clicking on them. No, not by clicking on them. By going down here and clicking harvest and saying, hey, harvest that. Oop, that was in the water. Harvest that stuff. And they'll get it all munched up. Now, before nighttime fully falls here, uh, speed controls, one, two, and three are your pause, uh, play, and fast forward. Other commands will show as we as we need them. Over here is going to be our bulletins. It'll show you when we get them. This button is important to us. Town info is going to give us all our details about our net worth and most importantly our net worth and our edibles. Breaks down the net worth in your inventory, which is pretty much everything right now. Buildings are very valuable for your net worth. Um, large buildings will have a slightly higher score contribution than small ones. Hmm. Uh, agriculture for animals and our plants and so on. Edibles. This is the cash value, basically, the gold value of all the food in town. I don't know how they calculate this military strength, but apparently it's 27, whatever that means. Uh, top here, we got uh, six um, workers, one crafter, and zero in the military. Shows a journal, no entries so far, inventory. This is inventory, period. So you see how this, these two are here? They're actually planted items. They're, they're stations. This workshop is, uh, workbench is actually a station. It's placed. So if you wanted to, say, build one in a structure and you tell it to, you try to place it, you'd actually have to take the old one out and place a new one or build a new one. Uh, town overview. So the two most important factors are going to be your net worth and your edibles. Every day you're going to get an option to, uh, told whether or not your town is prosperous and and well fed enough to add another hearthling to the crew and if so you'll click accept or decline each day you don't have to accept if, if it's available but you can and that'll give you a new hearthling we are going to definitely want to get new hearthlings as quickly as possible in my opinion there's not much negative to doing so so although i really don't know what what the game uses to determine uh whether or not you get like different events as you as we see this as you'll see the story kind of progresses and uh things kind of uh daisy chain into more and more difficult challenges as we go so let's see if we can get these beds all placed before they pass out and all nod off uh oh uh oh place your beds folks oh look 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 Oof! starting up the fancy fire so they don't go to bed immediately but I feel like they should probably be building these beds. That's kind of important. Can you build them? There we go. There's another one. That's four beds made. Oh, they're still moving those plants. We got two more to go. There's one and another one on the way there. Probably want to harvest this. Stone. Surface stone. Fun to harvest. Easy access. Uh-oh. One's asleep. Where's the other beds? Come on, build your beds before you go to sleep, guys. Yeah. Excellent. We have a night owl. Who is our night owl? Let's see. Well, I guess we'll probably find out real soon as they all probably just, you know, pass out here right away. Except for our night owl. <laughs> Alright, so we have a sword and we have a um, herbalist staff and we have a trapper's knife. I want to definitely go ahead and get those crew going fairly soon. Uh, look at that. I love this. They don't always go to bed right away at night. Sometimes they just sit around the fire and talk. Isn't that cute? Or stand around the fire and warm their hands. Love it. So, fantastic uh, game. I'm absolutely loving it. I think we're going to cut it there probably at the end of the night. Actually, you know what? Let's get, let them get into bed and get two more things set up here. So we have, um, <clears throat> we have a couple more people who need their jobs. So Ari is going to be temporarily 
<coughs> pardon me, temporarily going to be our trapper. Because the prerequisite for the uh, shepherd is the trapper. We're going to have to train her up to, I don't know what level. Um, what level do you need? Level 2 trapper. So she really doesn't have to spend much time on it before she can start uh, shepherding. But that's what we're going to do there. And now since she got... Oh, wait until she gets that. And then we can get it done. Uh, other than that, we got Elijah who's going to be our warrior. Not necessarily useful yet. We don't have a farming thing for uh, Drake. Exeter is going to be start out as our herbalist because he's going to be trained for a uh, cleric, and that I believe is the prerequisite still, right? For herbalist to become cleric, yes. Okay, so you need a level two herbalist to become a cleric. Hmm. Um, do we set anybody else? A weaver, uh, to be a weaver, you're going to need a weaver spindle. Right, no prerequisite skill for that, so we don't need that until the carpenter can make it. Janae is her blacksmith. I think that one needs masonry, right? Where are you? No, it's just straight blacksmith, but the mason has to build the blacksmith's hammer, if I'm not the mistake on the... All right, so that's going to be that. Let's see what we got. Do we have... Uh, can you, can you go do your, start your job? Look at you. Hello. <coughs> Pardon me. Hacking like crazy here. Uh, I shall definitely uh, get something to fix my throat in between now and the next recording. That is really awkward. All right. So what do we got here? 32 by... Let's make it a 32 by 32 square for trapping. So you just like you were zoning your... Uh, oh. That didn't work. Just like you're zoning out your uh, stockpiles, you can zone out trapping areas. I believe they can go to a max of 50 by 50, which is pretty awesome. We're going to give her two sets of 32 by 32s here. It is now morning. Wonderful. Everybody's fires out. Everybody's uh, had their all-nighter at camp. Stayed up till the wee hours of the morning. So we got ourselves a trapper set up. We got ourselves a carpenter doing some bit work on the beds. And we're going to do more skills and such shortly. We'll get our farmer going and our other trades going. We'll look into that in the next episode, however. But thank you so much for watching. Beginning of a new series. If you like uh, the idea of doing a series on this, please give us a fat thumbs up. I would love it. It would really help getting things started at the beginning of the series. And uh, please do subscribe so I can show you lots more content from the channel. There's other uh, series going, so hop over there and see, check out some of those. You might like them if you like this one. And other than that, as always, I will see you in game.